Where's Shasta? Shasta has a problem. Hi, so I've been married for six years, and my husband is wonderful. He's a great man. Um, and I'm not ungrateful, um, but I have to, like, tell him to do everything, like everything. Um, like if I want a hug, I have to say, hey, come over here and hug me. Or if I want to go out on a, the weekend, I have to say, why don't we go out on the weekend? And it's just kind of like a little unromantic to have to tell him all the time. And I was hoping that, I'm, oh, I'm hoping that maybe he'll think of it on his own, you know, and I don't want him to be a mind reader, but you know, am I being unfair by wanting that? I don't think you're being unfair for wanting it, but what I would definitely say is, is you married a man. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hello. And, and so he hears about 25% of what you say. Right. He hears nothing that you don't say, you know? And even of the 25% that he hears you say, he kind of gets 5% of that. Because okay. we'll be sitting next to, any man who's ever been in a relationship sitting next to a woman, you know, you know what's wrong, babe? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Man. Because no, we don't talk to each other like that, right. men. So, so, so getting used to talking to a woman and speaking your language and like hearing behind the lines of what you're saying, that is so far beyond. Once you tell him what you want, he's gonna, he's gonna remember it and he's gonna try to give it to you and make sure your needs are getting met. Now, <laughs> to take some of the weight off of you of having to say it, because what women get tired of is saying it. Now you feel like you're begging, you're nagging. You know a really slick way to do it? I call them just love notes. Stick them, just post stick them. The little things you tear off and stick it, just little notes. Yeah. I would love to go on a date with my husband this weekend. You know, if I could get three hugs this week, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> right. Hello. <laughs> You can actually make it cool for you. <laughs> and then just, he gonna get it. Mm -hmm. But we have to be told a lot of stuff. We don't hear nothing you don't say. <laughs> right. Because if I ask Margie, hey, baby, what's wrong? And she go, nothing. Cool. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. Okay, cool. All right. Next is uh, Norma. Norma's got a problem with a sleeping situation. <laughs> what's happening, Norma? Well, um, so my husband and I, I've been married for five years. We sleep in separate rooms. We started doing this six months ago because when he had the flu, and but then we discovered that we slept better having our own bed. So we just stay with it. And plus I'm a night person and he gets up really early in the morning. We still have great sex life and we still hang out at night. And, but when we have to go to bed, you know, we go to separate rooms. So I was talking to some of my girlfriends and somehow we got into the topic of sleep, right? And so I said something like, and then they just went nuts. And they told me that it was terrible, that it was really bad sign for my marriage. And so do you think that's a problem? I'll put it real simple. You, you're, you said you have a really great sex life. Yeah, we do. You said you get along really well. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, you, you said you're happily married and yeah. you're both getting a good night's sleep? Yes. Okay, check, 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 check. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Sure. If any of those things start to slip, yeah. then okay, then you gotta sit down, have a conversation okay. with him and say, hey, what's going on? We're not having sex like we used to. We're not spending time together in the evenings. We're going to our rooms, whatever it might be. But other than that, with all due respect to your girlfriends, t tell them to pay attention to their own marriages. Okay. You know? Okay. Keep an eye on what's going on in their house, in their bedroom. The only two people gotta be happy with your marriage are you and your husband. Yeah. And it sounds like you're doing great. Okay, cool, thank you, thank you. You have learned one thing from all of this. Stop talking about girlfriend. your relationship to other people. Yeah. Here is the best, the best advice I ever got. When you get married, form a two-handed circle. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody else in that circle. Because they don't, if you let your mama in, she gonna mess it up. Yeah. You can't let your friends in, they gonna mess it up. Form a two-handed circle, don't let nobody in it. You good. Josh is next. What's happening, Josh? My wife and I both work, and I make a living, but not enough to provide the lifestyle that we want and for our future children. And um, we want to do things such as save up for a home, 
go on vacation, but it's hard right now with both of us working as hard as we do. And it hurts even more to see her come home and stress and not be able to drop off her work at work, but it bothers her at home. And I just want to tell her, hey, babe, just, just quit. You know, don't worry about it anymore. But we, at the moment, cannot afford that. But I want to be able to provide that lifestyle. But at the same time, I want to have my wife back. You know? So what can we do? So I, I, it sounds to me like you have to prioritize. I mean, first thing. You know, I'm a fan of having a big house. I'm a fan of vacations. But, but it, it's worth a lot more to have a happy life, a happy wife, a happy connection than it is to have a big, big house. I, I represent a lot of people in my office with big houses who are miserable, OK? And if you want to think about, you know, it, th that it's expensive to have a big house, you know what's expensive? Getting divorced expensive, OK? Amen. You know, <laughs> the, the, listen, having a wife who's in a smaller home, maybe you don't go on as lavish of a vacation, but you're happy, you're connected, she's not as stressed, she looks at you as the provider that you're saying you want to be, that might be a more worthwhile investment than worrying about having a bigger house. And the big house will come someday. <laughs> OK. I understand where you are because you want to have something in life. You want to accumulate some material things. Yes, I mean, it's natural for people to want that. Uh, how old are you, my man? 25. So, hey, man, you so young. Mm -hmm. you, you're in the come up phase of life. But what James is saying is very true. You have to focus on the happiness. You got to find the little things to be grateful for, because right now, chasing the big house and the vacations is making you lose sight of what you should be grateful for. How about the fact that you're in a house right now? Mm -hmm. How about the fact that you are working right now? Mm -hmm. How about the fact that you are healthy right now? What about the fact that you do have enough to go out on a date night? See, that's what you got to look at. Here, okay, here's the last thing I'm going to give you. Success is not how far you've come. Success is how far you've come from where you started. Mm -hmm. Just look at where you started. If you look at where you started to where you are, you feel a lot better about yourself. Quit looking at Oprah and Tyler. I got to make a billion dollars. Hey, 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 your ass will never be happy. Think about where you were and now look at where you are. And y'all go on and get yourself a Happy Meal and go to the park and sit around, look at each other, and get all that. right. <laughs> you feel me? Yes, sir. Thank all right, that's the way you do it, man. Hey, I want to say thanks for helping us out today, James. My favorite segment. Everybody, uh, pick up a copy of James' book. Uh, if you're in my office, it's already too late. It's in stores now. We'll be right back, y'all. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're going to enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.